Hi everyone, welcome to another live ukulele jam with me Matt Stead at Canic Pila Mondays. Um, as always, if it's buffering a little bit at the, start, at the start, please be patient and it will soon settle down before you know it. Hope everyone's keeping well. We're going to do punk week this week, <laughs> which I'm really excited about. Now, if you're not into punk music, don't worry. We've got some amazing songs by the Buzzcocks, some really cool stuff, The Clash and The Jam as well. Apparently, every song that I chose tonight, every every band has a the at the start. Um, so even if you're not into your punk, we're going to do some really cool pop songs. They're just great standalone pop songs with some really, really lovely parts. So I think you're going to enjoy that. That. I'll teach you how to use the Nashville numbers as always and we'll kind of add a little bit of spice to these as well to make them them really really interesting. So um, I, I'm, uh, I used to be a punker believe it or not but not so much uh, anymore and I couldn't have I couldn't have hate because I don't believe in it so I've just got love for this week so that's my thing. I was gonna I was gonna do my Mohican but I, f I forgot it and I've left it at home. <laughs> Anyway, let's see who's here. Hope you're all doing well. So, um, yeah. No worries, no worries. Oh, cool, Mike. That's good to hear. Good to hear. That's brilliant. Catch up later if you if you have to head off. No worries, guys. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Really nice Pono, wasn't it, Mike? Your one. It's really, really cool. Hi, Andre. <laughs> cool. Hi, everyone, guys. Okay, so just to prove, right, that I was a punker back in the day, I thought I'd show you some photos. Let's see if this works. I, I dug about in my phone and I found some really old photos from my first band. Here we go. So this is me. <laughs> this is me live on the stage. I think, I think this was in Holland. Um, I think this one was in Amsterdam. Oh no, it's not. That's at the Cavern Club. I can see the background. That was in Liverpool, I think. I think. Yeah. So that's me when I had like ridiculously long hair. And <laughs> that's my friend Rob in the background. Here's me at a music festival, drinking a beer before we went on stage. <laughs> oh dear. When I was a when I was a whipper snapper, hey. Let's get rid of that <laughs> as quickly as we can. Uh, let's see if I can find any more. Here's me, I think this was in Dublin, I think, when we were playing a, a, a band. Look how skinny I was, oh my goodness, back in the day. Some of you might recognise that bass guitarist, he plays bass with me now, it's my friend Rob. And here's me at a music um, conference. I wanted to show you this because this music conference was headed by Fergal Sharkey from The Undertones. And we got to hang out with him and we're doing one of his songs for tonight. So this is us at In The City back in the day so there you go <laughs> that's as punk as I'm getting tonight <laughs> okay so let's have a look um couple of announcements to make oh hi John hope you're keeping well no teaching today good you can get your punk on hi David welcome welcome is it earth day today I get I get a bit confused um do 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 yeah so a couple of things hi Andy a couple of things to tell you about then guys so um the next couple of Mondays, we've got bank holidays here in the UK. So um, I will be away um, next week and the week after. So our next Canicapila after tonight, obviously, um, is going to be May the 15th. So we've got a break of two weeks off and then we're back May 15th. I'm actually away the week after on holiday. I'm so sorry, guys. It's that time of year. And then we're back to normal every other Monday from then. So no Canicapila next week or the week after but we'll be back after that. We've got a very special one after that where we're doing Canadian artists and I'm really excited. Um, obviously, some of you might know Goose or Karen on the forum who's from Canada and I've been promise her, promising her we'll do Gordon Lightfoot for ages. And I thought, I'll just look up ca Canadian artists because I'm sure there's a few and there's like tons of them. Loads of my favourite, um, some of my favourite artists I didn't even realise came from Canada. 
And of course, one of our ukulele heroes, James Hills from Canada as well. So we're going to be doing one of his. And then after that, we're going to keep them regular, as of course, when we get back into it. And we're going to have a special choice as well that you can vote for on the on the um, Facebook forum, where you can vote for repeated songs that we've done before. So everyone gets a chance to have their vote on there as well. More details to come. So we're here tonight, obviously. Um, away the next two weeks, back on May the 15th. I'll, I'll try and send a reminder around and put it all on Facebook anyway. So, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Esther, you don't. They're, they're incriminating. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hope you keep it well. Esther found one of my old songs on YouTube earlier when I was playing in London. That was a, that was a gig. Can't remember much about that night. It was a bit of a mad one. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's have a look then. Okay. So let's have a look at our sheets for tonight and I'll talk a little bit about the Nashville numbers and everything as we go. So here we go. Oh, I forgot to say, um, let me know if the sound level's all right. I'll give you a bit of ukulele in a minute, but um, just if you could just give me a bit of a sound check, let me know it's not feeding back or anything. But um, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, no, we never got to play with the field mice. I was a little bit later than that, to be honest. I was late 90s, early noughties. So, um, yeah, they'd been and gone by my time. Massive, massive fan of theirs. So I absolutely love the field mice. That would have been amazing. We got to play. We were quite lucky. We did a gig with the Manic Street Preachers. We got to play with, who did we play with? Graham Coxon from Blur. We did we did quite a few um, gigs back in the day, but never really got anywhere. We got played on Radio 1. That's my claim to fame by Steve Lamack, which was quite cool. But that's about as exciting as it got. Hi, yeah. Uh, hi, JR. Hope you're keeping well. And uh, no, not Rush either. No, I, I'm younger than I look. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a bit later than all that. But um, yeah, P punk is one of my favourite areas of music. But it, I think maybe because it, is, it, it all happened the year I was born, really, 1978 into 1979. So yeah, but I was a little baby back then. <laughs> Okay, right, let's have a look at some of these, um, let's have a, we'll jump in with our first song tonight. Um, feel free to ask any questions with anything as you go along. People are always are too scared to ask questions, but everyone's thinking the same thing. And people are just, you know, when you do ask that question, you're helping out loads of other people, because you can almost guarantee that everyone was like, oh, I was thinking that too. So don't be afraid, ask any questions, send any comments along. Um, and I'll be glad to help. And even if I miss it, um, Esther and Drani or, or Karen, I'm sure will point um, will help me find your questions. So the first song we're doing tonight is in the key of G. It could be four of us in the key of E minor, but I, I because every major key has a minor, a relative minor, which has all the same chords and notes. But it's easier to think of it in the key of G because we can just count up from G. So this song, and usually the chorus starts with the six chord in the key of G. G, A, B, C, D, E. That just means it's named after the sixth note from the G major scale. And that gives it a real kind of, almost like a darkness to it, because minor chords have that kind of grittiness, don't they, which is nice. So, E minor. Rush on ukulele, that would be interesting, maybe. Our drummer was into Rush, actually, so you never know. Um, so this is your E minor, going up the stairs, nice and simple, okay? That's your sixth chord. Now, the next chord we're going to do is D, but notice that it's only for one B. How do we know that? Well, if you look carefully over here where we've got the sheet, can you see that the first measure... We're in common time, so that just means four strums. One and two and three and four and. Well, the next measure has an E minor and a D in it. Can you see next to that first E minor, there are three slash marks. That means that when we play for three beats, one and two and three, and then we do a quick D and four, and then we're back to E minor. So we count it like this. One, two, three, and, uh, sorry, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, now don't sweat that too much. 
you can just play an E minor for the whole of that part and ignore the D. All right, so if you miss it, um, don't sweat it. I actually play this at quite a decent um, speed as well. That's going to be your first bit, all right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we just finally resolve to the one chord, which makes it feel settled and rested. And I'm going to show you a little riff of that in a sec. So let's just have a look. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, Esther's right. Everything is possible on the ukulele. Absolutely. We're playing punk on the ukulele. Who'd have thought it, eh? So yeah. Even I've even played Philip Glass on the ukulele just because someone challenged me. <laughs> so you can even do ambient art music on the ukulele. Um, oh yeah, and Karen's just reminded me, if you could give a thumbs up on the video, um, the actual video itself, it just helps YouTube to pick it up. If you comment on the actual video itself afterwards as well, that's a massive help. Thanks guys, that's absolutely brilliant. I'll go through tips and all that stuff later on as well. All right, so that that's your that's our verse basically. If I play a couple of lines from that, I'm just going to move it along so you can still see what I'm doing. And I'll come in on close cam and you can follow along. So the first bit will look and sound something like this. I'll do one instrumentally. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, D. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and G. So that's our verse. You spur my natural emotions and make me feel like dirt. And I'm hurt. Okay. Now there's also something else we can put in this bit which is really nice. What I like to do is I like to kind of echo the guitar part that has this really nice riff. What I'm doing is I'm playing a G chord and I'm adding my little finger down to the fourth fret of the C string. See how it's just coming on and off? Now again, you can just strum a G here. You don't have to add this riff. It's absolutely fine if you want to just strum a G to play along. The timing, if you want to add it, we add our little finger on the and after one, one and two, and then we add it on the and before four. I'll show you what I mean. One and two, three and four, one and two, three, E and four. All right, you could just experiment with that. You can also add it down here on the third fret of the A string. Or you could mix them up. It's just a way of adding a little bit of kind of um, fun, kind of a little bit of dynamics into things. But it's not it's not crucial at all. So don't sweat that, guys. That will sound something like this. One, two, three. You spur my natural emotions and make me feel like dead and I'm hurt. I'd see a little bit of punkiness, all right? And that's it for the verse, okay? And if you struggle with that, just strum E and G and you'll be absolutely fine, all right? You don't have to add this this kind of um this kind of riff to it. Oh hi Betty, hope you're keeping well. <laughs> cool. Hi Andy. Okay, right, so let's have a look at the chorus then. The chorus is relatively straightforward. Again, sounds really effective, but it's really simple. We just go E minor D, E minor D. Ever fallen in love with someone, ever fallen in love, in love with someone. Then we have a chord which is comes up loads in Indian punk music. It's the flatted seventh from a key. That just means if we count up from our, our tonic, the key that um, the note that the key is named after, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. In the key of G, the F is normally an F sharp. That's just something that you either know or you don't know or you can learn tonight, right? Every key has a certain amount of sharps and flats. And G has one flat and it's this F. 
And so you would expect to, for the seventh chord to play a form of F sharp chord. But we play the flatted seventh, we play a normal F. And that came up loads in punk. It has a grittier sound than playing the normal seven, the flat seven. It's often a bit thought of as something called the mixolydian mode, where we play that flatted rather than normal. Don't sweat it, but loads of punk songs are, used, um, are played using that. The Beatles used to love it as well. It's really common. It happens in the blues as well. So you're going to see that flat 7 chord come up a lot. Now, the easy, nice thing for us is it's just an F chord. All right, so the actual chord itself isn't too difficult. We just hit an F chord. So the second part, ever fallen in love with someone, shouldn't have fallen in. Then we've got another type of riff. Again, if you struggle with this, just play D. Honestly, it'll be absolutely fine. Just play D. But if you want to add this riff, we just do one D, one G, two Ds. Now the timing. One, sorry. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I do one D, one G, two Ds, and then I do it again. And we speed it up gradually. A little bit faster. Okay, that's it for that bit. Really, really nice. Yeah, it's almost like, um, just going to pause for a sec because we've got some comments coming in. Yeah, it almost um, it almost does feel a bit like a boogie note, doesn't it? Like a boogie-woogie note. Um, I guess I guess it's kind of got a bit of a shuffle feel, but not quite because it's not swung. So a shuffles tend to be kind of swung, but this is very straight, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of got that feel to it, which is sweet. It just kind of breaks it up a little bit, doesn't it? Which is super nice. Let's have a go at uh, one of the choruses then, and then we'll see about putting it all together. Okay, so let's go a bit slower this time. One, two, three, four. Born in love with someone, ever born in love, in love with someone, ever born in love, in love with someone, shouldn't have fallen in love with. Yeah. Ever fallen in love with someone, ever fallen in love, in love with someone, ever fallen in love, in love with someone you shouldn't have fallen in love with. Fantastic. That's great. That's brilliant. Brilliant. This one, by the way, was 1978. I told you loads of these songs are from 1978 and 1979. When we think of genres, we kind of think of them as lasting like half a decade to a decade, don't we? But punk was really short lived. It was just a year or two at the end of the 70s. And then some of these songs would even be debatable whether they're punk, because after that came New Wave, which was kind of really, really similar. And some of these could be thought of as New Wave songs, particularly um, the only ones that we'll do a, li a little bit later. Um, and it got to number 12, this one did, for the Buzzcocks. Um, and it's written by Peter Shelley as well. Just checking all my things. Um, Sh um, Karen's done some fantastic um, quick facts in the back, some fascinating facts that are really interesting. And this song's kind of, I, I didn't know this, so apparently Pete, Pete Shelley was watching Guys and Dolls before they were going to go on stage one time. And there's a line, there's a famous line in there, wait till you fall in love with someone you shouldn't have. And apparently that line stuck with him and he was in his van after work one day and he wrote out all the lyrics with that in mind, which is interesting. The music came later. But yeah, just a bit of a really fascinating fact in the back there that you can see in the back of the sheets. That's mostly it. Now, where it says bridge, there's no kind of solo or anything in this one. Where it says bridge, all we're going to do is we're going to do that little riff I showed you. We're going to do that four times. That's all that means. Again, if you're in doubt, just strum a G. Don't have to do anything fancy pants. Just strum a G and you'll be absolutely fine. One last bit. There's a kind of an unusual outro at the end. So after we've done our final chorus and we have this bit at the end. 
for the final chorus after we've done that, after we've just played those chords I just did, we do a similar thing but a whole step down. We do C, F, C, C, F, C. And then finally a B flat, everyone's least favourite chord. Try and get those fingers down as diagonal as possible. Try not to have them too straight. That will allow you to reach up and over. Remember your thumb wants to be on the back of the ukulele and you want a nice gap here. You don't want to flatten down like this. Have a nice gap that will allow you to reach over. All right, and try and keep those fingers on a diagonal. And if in doubt, just you could always lift up and just play the top three which isn't too bad, and then a D chord. Okay, So it just has this kind of ending. If I just play it for you and um, quickly from the D, G, D bit. Then C. Ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't have fallen in love with? It's a great end, isn't it? Really great end to a song. All right. Should we give it a go? We, it's nice to just launch into one. We can have a little bit more time afterwards where we, you can ask me questions and we, we can find out how we got on with it. But should we just give it a go? Let's get let's get let's get into a song. Okay. Um, I'll stay here. So um, rather than close cam, um, if it looks like I'm looking off into the vague distance, as I always say, it's just because I've got the lyrics over here and I do I can never remember them, even though it's one of my favourite songs. I, I have a brain like a sieve when it comes to lyrics, so I do have them written down. All right, let's give it a go. Now the intro, we're going to do that riff I showed you. Again, if in doubt, just strum a G. Be absolutely fine. All right. One, two, three, four. Here we go. You spur my natural emotions.
<laughs> well done, guys. I feel like I should be getting my ukulele and smashing it on the stage. Don't worry, I'm not going to. I love my camera. <laughs> well done, guys. Let us know how you got on with that. Give us a like or a heart or an angry face if you like. You don't have to do an angry face, honestly. It's fine. <laughs> um, so just see how everyone's getting on. I'll just pause for a minute and then we'll um, we'll have a look at our next song in just a second. Um, what have we got next? Oh, the undertones. Now I love the undertones. So I had a, had a really weird... Um, a really weird um, kind of moment of five minutes of fame with the undertones. So, you know, um, Fergal Sharkey, lead singer of the undertones, who fascinatingly now is um, massively into nature conservation. And he's really a real key figure in trying to preserve and conserve our chalk streams in the UK. We've got beautiful upland chalk streams um, that are a massive kind of um, cauldron of biodiversity and wildlife and they're like all our rivers they're starting to become polluted and he's on a campaign to save our chalk streams really fascinating guy and um, after the undertones he became president of the musicians union for a while so he used to organize all these music conferences and i was at one of these music conferences my um friends trying to get a record deal up in manchester and um i was i was at the bar and i can't remember we were talking to some other musician or not and he came up to me and he was like, um, I'm not going to do the Irish accent, but he had this old typewriter and he was like, can you go and take this typewriter to this guy over here? It's a true story, honestly. And um, and he pointed out this guy in a suit over the other side. And I was like, OK, yeah, fine. And uh, my mate Rob came over me and Rob was like, that's Tony Wilson's head of fa factory records. You know, the guy who signed Joy Division <laughs> and all these other amazing bands. It's like... Why does Fergal Sharkey get me to take this typewriter over to him? So I had this like old beat up typewriter. I guess it was a gift or something. And I went over and I said, um, Fergal asked me to give this to you. And he just, Tony Wilson just looked at me like I was a complete, completely insane and just turned his back and started talking to the next guy. So me and Rob for like two days around this music conference, we're like wheeling around this old dusty typewriter and um, I ended up just keeping it, keeping it. I didn't give it back to Fergal Sharkey. So I had this old dusty typewriter. It didn't work, but it lived in my bed sit for about five years. I was very proud of that typewriter. It ended up getting junked when I moved one time. But yeah, sorry, it's just like the most random story in the world ever. But I don't have many five minutes of fame. So I have to I have to kind of enjoy, enjoy them when they come, up, come along. So um, yeah, cool. <laughs> Hi, Phyllis. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, good. Punk is alive and well. Loved it. Oh, cool. Thanks, John. John, we got to get together soon, mate. I'll send you an email. I keep meaning to email. Um, cool. <laughs> the neighbours are out tonight. I've got a, 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 a studio above me, but they're out tonight so I can make loads of noise. <laughs> okay, well done, everyone. Well, any questions, just keep them coming and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them as we go. So enough of my rambling kind of memories and everything let's have a look at this song this was um the undertone's second single this one jimmy jimmy this one was 1979 20th of april 1979 exactly 11 days after i was born this song came out and it didn't get a very good reception um it did better than their second single because they released it on um bright yellow vinyl which was quite unusual and it became a bit of a collector's edition but didn't do brilliantly well they didn't really kind of take off until john peel really started championing them championing them and then they had them um, obviously teenage kicks which was like massive but i always had a soft spot for this song it's just so simple and so sweet and uh, this one follows um i'm, I'm going to ignore the intro for a minute but if you look at the verse it follows a really common pattern in music and that's the one four five chords so we can really use these nashville numbers in this one so that means you could play this in any key you can apply these numbers to any key remember the numbers just relate to the chords in a, in a key and the chords go one two three four five six seven in a key of g g a b c d e f sharp now the one, four, five chords in the key of G, G, not A, not B, C and D, right? So you can see we have the one chord that sets us off. 
the five chord adds some tension and makes you want to go back to the one chord. And we do that via the four chord in this one. Now, why am I banging on about those numbers? Well, if you know the one, four, five in G. One, five, four, five. One, five, four, five. You could play that in any key, couldn't you? The one, four, five in the key of C. C, D, E, F and G, right? One, So you could play that in the key of C. So that's why these chords, are, these numbers are really, really powerful. Classic one, five, four, five um, combination here at the start. So really, really quite simple chords. Then the next bit that we've got, the chorus, we've got two chords in one box. That means we have two beats of C, two of D and then G. Now don't miss, there's a little times three there, so we do this three times. Jimmy, Jimmy, oh. Jimmy, 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 oh. Okay, so we do that three times, then we go, it's that flat seven chord I told you about to look out for, an F, just like in the last song. So really simple. Let's try one of those choruses so you can see what I'm on about. I come in on close cam. One, two, three, four. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. The bridge is just the one, five, four, five, just like in a verse, only each of the chords is only two beats each. So the bridge is basically, it's like someone took the verse and they squeezed it down. So instead of every chord being a measure, we've got two beats of each. So that will sound like this. G, D, C, D, just over and over. Silly. That's it. Now, finally, at the end of the chorus, the final chorus, we do a normal chorus, and then the last chorus, this bit, Jimmy, Jimmy, we just do again and again. Jimmy, Jimmy, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, until we get bored. Let's see how long we can do that before we get bored. All right. Now, the reason I left, left the intro to last is because it makes it easy, because the intro is just a chorus. All right, so we just play exactly what we do on the chorus for an intro. Then we do a verse. The rest is as simple as that, right? There's no um, solos on this one. There's not a lot of solos in punk music because punk music was about like doing away with all the ornamentation, stripping everything right back to, to the very basics, okay? It's really interesting because punk music, we think of like snarling loud guitars, don't we, and angular riffs and all this stuff. But really, that kind of three chords and the truth, it goes back to Woody Guthrie and folk music, really, doesn't it? So it's really kind of fascinating, I think. Punk music is kind of tied up in folk music. And you kind of think of them as like completely juxtaposed, but they are, whether you like it or not. <laughs> OK, right. Just check there's no other questions or anything. I think we're good to go. We'll give this one a go. There is a song with a solo later. So David, I'm looking at you or anyone else that wants to take a solo. We are going to have opportunities later on. All right, let's have a go at this one then. Okay, guys, here we go. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four, C. Very small, he did what he was told. 
awake all night, lying in his bed. No one ever listened to a single word he said. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. play that and have a smile on your face right I just think it's great I just think it's great and um I that's what I love about punk music right everyone thinks about it as the opposite but it's super accessible that's you know it, it might be a tough at first those chord changes but a bit of practice you could get that definitely so um yeah okay let's see how everyone's doing so um Oh yeah, of course, John. It'd be exam, exam, um, exam time soon, won't it? So uh, yeah, cool. We shall, we shall sort it out. Um, there is a story, Karen. There is a story. I think it might be on Wikipedia who Jimmy is. Um, there, there, there was. I, I, I think I saw a documentary of John Peel and um, and the the Undertones came came out in the nineties, but it's a documentary looking back at the Undertones and their time before um, John Peel passed away and I'm sure they have the story of Jimmy Jimmy I can't remember what it was there's really if you look on Wikipedia there's a really mean kind of review of it as well saying they took like the most basic chords and the most ridiculous story and stuck them together in the most vacuous piece of pop music or something but isn't all pop music meant to be a little bit dumb I don't know maybe I think so I think we can be really snobby about stuff like that <laughs> just think it's actually a great song but uh, yeah, lots of room for strum patterns. I hadn't mentioned strum patterns tonight. We're going to keep everything relatively straight with ups and downs. But yeah, you could do rolled strums and all sorts of things like that. The next one's going to have a really interesting pattern. So don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about that with the next one for sure. So um, yeah, <laughs> I only just got that, Lisa. Lisa's put, here's the list Osmond, Jimmy Jimmy. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, thanks, Esther. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Esther's enjoying herself. Esther, you said I had to dress up as a punk. I hope you're wearing something. Maybe some tartan and some, uh, I don't know, some ripped tartan and some uh, safety pins. Who knows? <laughs> oh, this is a cool one. Chris said, a kid I sat next to at school went to see undertones and got their autographs. Oh, amazing. I got the job of borrowing over them when they started to fade. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. I bet he didn't wash for like a month after that. Hey, <laughs> I, I I was a bit like that. I used to get things signed. I used to get T-shirts signed. 
And you know other people, they go to see bands and they get t-shirt signs and they frame them and put them up on the wall. I couldn't do that. I wanted to show them off to my friends. So I used to I used to wear them. And of course, they, they kind of fade away, wouldn't they, every time your mum washed them. So uh, I think I've probably still got some old my old band t-shirts, but I think the um, a lot of the, the signatures are long gone, unfortunately, which is a shame. Oh, let me just turn my light on again. It's just faded off. Cool. All right then, guys. Okay, so <laughs> Esther's saying she's gone the whole hog. It's a shame. It's not a two-way video. I need photographic evidence or it didn't happen, Esther. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, let's have a look at something different. This next song's really, really interesting, okay? We're going to do um, Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash, which is a great, another great song, right? This one was a little bit later, so 1982. So we're getting towards the kind of new age movement rather than, um, rather than kind of traditional punk. Uh, this one was written by Mick Jones before he left. A lot of people thought that he was talking about should he stay or should he go with The Clash, but Mick Jones said, really, it was it was about a relationship that he, he was having at the time with um, with his girlfriend. So it's not about the clash. It was about that, apparently. And interestingly, I didn't realise this. I was, I was reading up about this. I, I'd not heard of this song, but apparently it nicked the melody from Little, Little Lapin Loopy Loo. I don't even know how to say that. Little Latin Loopy Loo. Perhaps some of you guys know it by Bill Medley. Um, it was covered by the Kingsmen. And apparently it just takes the melody pretty much just, you know, straight up just lifted it. Um, but but kind of you know, new words and a kind of punky chords and everything. And again, we could be snobby about that, couldn't we? But if we think about the history of music, particularly jazz music, it's all about lifting melodies or chords and making them something different. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. Some really cool, um, really cool chords as well. And... Um, Oh, yeah, shout out to the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain, because I think they do this one, don't they? Which is really cool. I think um, um, Karen mentions that in the Fascinating Facts. Oh, Lisa's, Lisa's got black eyeliner on. Love it, Lisa. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> That's great. That's cool. Um, so yeah, this one's um, this one's a, a classic clash tune. Now this one's really interesting because there's a lot of what we call NCs. Can you see those little NCs across here all over the chords? An NC means no chord. And it's slightly misleading when we say NC because no chord actually means A chord. <laughs> we tend to play a chord and let it hang. I'll show you what I mean in a second so we'll, we'll kind of um, so you can kind of get an idea. Um, I'm just going to check in a couple more comments coming in, so, um, yeah. Yeah, they suit ukulele brilliantly, don't they, JR? Because, yeah, repetitively, bouncy, great to, great to sing. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm slightly biased, but, but I love them. <laughs> so, let's have a look at this. We've got another riff. It shows you how um, similar a lot of these punk songs are as well, because this is really, really similar to the riff from um, Ever Fallen In Love which is really cool. Esther, send me a picture and I'll post it. <laughs> I don't think she's really wearing punk stuff, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, right. Um, so um, let's have a look. This one has the D to G to D again, but this time we have two Ds, two Gs, and then one D and we hang. Now it's gonna, that's your timing at its simplest. One, two, one, two, one. All right. Now I like to strum this with down strums and I count one, two, and one, two, and one. Okay. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay. Let's try that a few times. Two, three, four. Down, down, up. Just let, let that last chord hang if you or if you want to do what I'm doing I'm muting the strings so putting my fingers over all four strings and then I'm just continuing to strum up and down for the rest of the measure one two one two one two three four now if you do that what you've got to do is you've got to make sure you don't press these strings if I press ah! That's a jazz chord, isn't it? You get a kind of a horrible chord. So as you chuck, we call it, just put your fingers on the strings, but don't press. 
Esther's going to record one of these. So there we go. We'll get to see her outfit then. Perfect, Esther. <laughs> good, good. I love it. We've set the challenge. So it'll sound like this. Now, the song looks more complicated than it is, basically. Notice we do that twice in the verse. So we get, darling, you gotta let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Now, the next part of the verse, we just do exactly the same thing, but G, F and G. There's that F coming up again, right? Just like that, right? Then we do D, G, D again. Let's put all that together so far, because that's going to be the large part of the song, okay? I'm staying in on close cam. I know I'm a beheaded body, but just so you can follow on here. Um, come in on the word, no. Darling, you got to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Now, GFG, if you say that you are mine, I'll be here till the end of time. Now, the next thing we do is we've got a measure of A7. So, so you gotta let me know. Then we pause for a measure. Should I stay or should I go? Okay, so we just do that A7 for one measure and then we no chord it. You could chuck it again. Let's do another verse and you'll see what I mean. It's always tease, tease, tease. Happy when I'm on my knees. Whoops. One day is fine, the next is black. So if you want me off your back, well, come on and let me know. Should I stay or should I go? And that's basically every verse, believe it or not. Every single verse does that again and again and again. All right. Now, the chorus is all we have to do. I say all, you know, it's never as easy as that, is it? But we just keep a, a straight eight strum going. That just means you can strum up and down. Or you can add a little bit of kind of um, emphasis with a few shades if you want. Or you could just strum all down strums. Should I stay or should I go now? Just keep strumming. If I go, there will be trouble. Doing the same as before. If I stay, it will be double. So come on and let me know. And then on the last one, we pause again. All right. And that's it. That's it. We're either strumming or we're doing the no chordy bits. And that's the entire song. Really, really effective. Again, punk rock. So we don't have a solo on this one. There is one coming. Don't worry. Um, in another one. But that's it. So the verses, we're doing the stoppy starty bit. The chorus, we're strumming, which gives it that really kind of um, that real push. Now, just a heads up, on the first chorus, everyone sings, should I stay or should I go at the end? But there's a little warning. I've been caught out with this at indie clubs before, loads of times. There's no should I stay or should I go at the end of the first chorus. Every other one there is, but just not the end of that first one. And I like that. It kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat, which I think is, which is fun, right? So just have loads of fun with this. Now, there is one instrumental verse but there's not really a guitar. There's just like a, a little kind of angry couple of notes on guitar. There's not a solo or anything. Um, and there's that's when they start singing in Spanish on record as well, which I'm not going to do. And that's for the backing vocalists anyway. Apparently, Joe Strummer's girlfriend was um, studying Spanish and or she was Spanish. It's one of the two. I can't quite remember. So there's quite a lot of Sp um, Spanish influence on the Clash stuff, which quite surprised for a rock band. Of course, there's Spanish Bombs that he wrote about Spanish Civil War, which is another great song. Spanish Bombs in Andalusia. That's a great song as well. Okay, so on the instrumental verse, we're just going to do a... Okay, now 
David, you could, if you wanted to, do, do a solo in D major, this one. So if you wanted to do that, that would be a D major pentatonic scale. Now, just, I'll just show you ever so quick, because I don't want to do too much on this, because we'll do solo in, in a bit. But D major pentatonic is just like the, D, the G major, which we use all the time up here, but you start it from D. So it's 2-4 on the C string, 2-5 on the E string, 2-5 on the A string. So if you want a solo to this one, you could add some notes from that D pentatonic and maybe give it a go. That's your challenge, David, and anyone else that wants to try. Oh, hi, Indrani. Hope you're keeping well. I hope you're doing well. Okay, just in time for the clash. <laughs> Oh, John, you've got to do it. If nothing else, just listen to um, Spanish Bombs. Brilliant piece of historical songwriting as well as a great punk song. So, yeah, you've got to get into the clash mode. OK, let's give it a go. Should we try? Now, the intro is just that riff twice. All right, and then we'll start singing. Play along. Have loads of fun. Here we go. One, two, three, four. forgot to start singing. I always go wrong on one, don't we? I'm so sorry, I should have sung as soon as I finish that second riff. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> Darling, you got to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? If you say that you are mine, I'll be here till the end of time So you gotta let me know Should I stay or should I go? It's always tease, tease, tease You're happy when I'm on my knees One day is fine and next is black So if you want me off my back well, come on and let me know Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? If I go there will be trouble If I stay it will be double Decisions bugging me. If you want me, set me free. Exactly who I'm supposed to be. Don't even know which close to me. So come on and let me know. Should I cool it or should I blow? carried away in the choruses. I hope you didn't mind. I was going a little bit mad, but oh, that is so much fun, that one. I love that song. Absolutely brilliant. 
and um, it's it's interesting. So um, apparently, it was brought back in nineteen ninety one. I think it says in um, Karen's fascinating facts at the back, and I remember that because um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm going to be old enough to remember that one. And it, it was used in a Levi's commercial. I always thought it was a bit of a sellout. They always said that they would never let their music be used for um, commercial purposes. So they were never used in any adverts before, radio or TV. And they said they would allow that one because it was for Levi jeans. And Levi jeans were kind of a symbol of pop culture. If you think back to Jack Kerouac and the beat mix and all that. And then the punks later on, I guess, you know, that denim thing was really, really important in the in the fashion. But I kind of think that was an excuse for them to make loads of money off it, frankly, in the 90s. And that's OK. That's fine. That's fine. Right. But yeah, that's that's my two tuppence worth. But yeah, so it was re-released in 1991 um, because it and it did really well. I think it got to number 12, I think might have been might have been, been higher than that. Some perhaps some will tell me. But yeah, really great fun, isn't it? So uh, yeah, ah, oh, David said we ended it at the first, at the same time, which was which was good. That's always a great sign, isn't it? When you end at at the at the right time, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> oh no worries, Indrani. Oh, Lisa spotted the pants. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, I'm just gonna pause for a uh, uh, just for a couple of minutes, guys, before we tackle last two. It's actually gone really quick. Don't worry, we've still got number two to come, but it's actually gone really quickly tonight. And I guess that makes sense because a lot of these um punk songs are only like two minutes long, aren't they? So I haven't thought about that. Maybe I should have done a few more, but ho hum. If we finish early, I'll um I'll stay around for questions, and we could always repeat one for fun or something anyway. So so don't worry. Um, so yeah, a couple of things to, to just mention. So if anyone's um, feeling super generous, um, you can send me tips to thank me. So I try and keep as much of my stuff um, as free as possible so that if people can't afford to tip, they don't have do so it's accessible for everyone but um if you wanted to contribute towards the running costs to help me out um there's a tips jar here paypal.me forward slash ukroom u-k-e-r-o-o-m um otherwise if you follow the link in the description you can go to my website where you can buy me a virtual cup of coffee um virtual high five um if you're um crazy generous you can even sign up for a monthly donation you're not obliged to at all but some people have asked for that option so that's there as well but there's details as how you can buy me a three pound cup of coffee and um i haven't because i've been so busy with teaching I've, I've taken on a lot of new students recently I, I haven't had a chance to thank everyone personally um by email or anything so i just want to say if you have sent a donation it is it is um it is gratefully received and i'm really really thankful so thank you from the bottom of my heart everyone su supports me as i say if it wasn't for you guys sending that i wouldn't be able to do this so you guys are how keeping it all going so thank you i really really appreciate it and you are amazing <laughs> simple as that okay um so a couple of other things um we will have a live lesson again um we had a postponed one um last wednesday so there won't be one this wednesday we do those fortnightly but the wednesday after and what we're going to look at is songs with harmonics in where you get these really cool Almost like bow like tones. And I'm going to teach you how to play one handed harmonics like this and just a natural two hand harmonics as well. So we're going to have loads and loads of fun with that. I'm going to show you how you could even use them to create little kind of melodies. Esther, you'll recognise that one. I haven't practised that. I'll make sure I practice before lesson, but that's from one of my pieces. So that's going to be next Wednesday, 3.30. I do a live lesson every other Wednesday. I'm a bit behind, so I haven't had a chance to do the, the poster for it and the sheets and stuff yet, but that'll be coming up again. And just in case anyone missed the start of this can of capilla, just a reminder, I'm away for the next two Mondays. We've got bank holidays here. 
Um, you can blame it on the king. So one of those is our king's coronation. Um, not that I'm massively into all that, but um, Prince Charles turns into King Charles on the, I think that's the one that's the week after next. And then we always have our May Day bank holiday where we, where a load of us Brits get the barbecues out if it's nice or head to the beach. So, so I'm off for the next two Mondays, but back the week after. Okay, let's just see if there's any questions for yeah, totally. It's it's so hard not to get carried away with all of these. <laughs> it's, it's lucky we're on Skype and you're not in the room because I'm sure there's little globules of spit as I get carried away, <laughs> just like they would in real punk gigs. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> David says he's already a bit wacky. <laughs> Nice. Oh yeah, my Indrani. I I um I I, I was going to go for full on punk, but um my my receding hairline doesn't let me do a Mohican anymore, unfortunately. So this was this was my one uh, my one bit of punk for the night. Now um it's normally love hate, isn't it? But I said earlier I don't believe in hate, so I'm just going to be love love tonight. All right. So there we go. <laughs> I don't do hate unless it comes to mayonnaise. If someone puts mayonnaise on a sandwich, then there's hate. That's the only time. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's have a look. I'm just being daft, guys. I've got a bit mad tonight. Okay. So let's have a look. Funny enough, Indrani, our star striker at Swindon's just dyed his hair blue. Everyone's really worried. Everyone thinks it means that he's going to leave us and go to QPR who wear blue in their kit. Hopefully not. But uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, this, this has a great picture on it as well. Esther's really outdone herself with her pictures. That one earlier, um, I'm just going to show it quickly. Um, here, um, of the Buzzcocks. That's just amazing, Esther. I keep saying she's been doing these to avoid copyright um, from putting pictures in. She's been doing these amazing pictures for us. And isn't that absolutely wonderful? I think that's great. Do you know what? I would frame that and put it on my wall. I'm not, I'm not even joking. That is amazing. That reminds me to thank Indrani for the lovely bit of um, uh, birthday artwork you sent as well, Indrani. I absolutely loved that um, artwork you sent. It was gorgeous. Thank you so much. Okay, right. Let's have a look then. So, do, 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 do. here we go. A bit of that's entertainment. Again, a lot of deliberation. Really, you could probably say this isn't punk music. It's more kind of new wave, especially this one. But it just has that really cool feel to it. Of course, the jam were really a mod band, weren't they, rather than a punk band. But I kind of, I kind of love this one, so we had to put it in. And this one's really unusual. So a lot of the jam stuff again is Paul Weller on angular electric guitar, right? Isn't it? Not a lot of solos and stuff, but a lot of kind of really jagged, um, loud kind of angular guitar kind of um riffs and uh, and chords and stuff. But this one he recorded just with an acoustic guitar. And I think it's really all the more effective for that. So this is absolutely glorious for ukulele, this one. It, it just works perfect. So, um, yeah. Indrani, not yet, but I'm. the reason is I'm, I'm going to get it framed. And then I'm going to put it up. So, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Sorry, guys, I just realised my nukes got out of tune from all this thrashing. Give me a second. Now, this one is another opportunity um, to look at the Nashville numbers because the chords are really simple in this one. We have the one chord and the one chord in any key, we're in the key of G again here, sets you off on a journey. All right, so this one we've got the one chord, just kind of sets you off from home. Please, car and a screaming siren. Then we have the, the sixth chord. Now we've had loads of loads of songs that have gone from G to E minor, haven't we? It's happened loads in all of the canicapillas we've done. And if you start to recognise these chord changes, it makes it easier to play. You can guess they're going to happen. And we can even do my G to E minor trick on this one. Do you remember, guys, if we play G, a G chord like this, when we go to E minor, rather than switching all your fingers around like this, which is fine, you could do that. You can simply put your little finger down here 
at the fourth fret of the C string. Okay, like that. Now this one we're going to strum straight eights. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Notice that my hand is isn't moving all that much. I mostly concentrate my strum on the top few strings. It's barely touching as far as the A string. And I'm just strumming down with the nails of my right hand. Now you don't have to have long nails like I do. Short nails will work perfectly fine for this. In a minute I'm going to show you a little shake in this one like this. Just for now, just keep those down strums going. That happens twice. Then we go to an A minor. Okay, use your second finger for this. That's the two chord. The two chord in any key, G, A, is played as a minor. This one is no exception. We have an A minor. Easy peasy, right? Then we go to that flatted seven chord again, that F happening in all these punk songs. Isn't that interesting? It has a real kind of grittiness to it. That should be an F sharp minor. But here we've got it as an F minor. Actually, it should be an F sharp diminished on the other hand. But... So that second line, we have, um, that's entertainment. And we do that again. That's entertainment. And then we're just back to our G and E minor. And believe it or not, that's it. I'm going to stay up close, Cam, just to give you a run through a verse and a chorus. Then I'll show you our little shaky bit, and then we'll piece it all together. Just such a great song. So verses G to E minor four times. One, two, three. Police car and a screaming siren Pneumatic drill and a ripped up concrete A baby wailing and a stray dog holding Sorry, a baby, <laughs> a stray dog holding I'm so sorry, misread that A baby wailing and a stray dog howling The screech of brakes and a lamplight blinking That's entertaining song believe it or not it really is that simple and we're going to replicate exactly what Paul Weller does because he does this little shake now you can play it without the shake don't worry it's absolutely fine just by doing those straight A's simple as that right? now to put the shake in before you do your first one one and two and three and four we do a really quick down up down takes a lot of practice. In slow motion, I'm going down, oh, where is this? There we go. I'm going down, up, down. So let's start slow. Down, up, down, 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 up, down. Down, up, down. Down, up, down, and two, and three, and four, and a shake. Down, up, down, two, two, and three, and four. Down, up, down, and two, and three, and four. It gets quite tough when you bring it up to speed. If I do a few, down, up, down, and two, and three, and four. Down, up, down, and two, and three, and four. And a shake. And a shake, and two, and three, and four. And a shake, and two, and three, and four. Now I'll put some of these in. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I won't just because it puts me off my vocals when I do it sometimes. But it'll sound like this. See that? A police car and a screaming siren. Pneumatic drill and a ripped up concrete. A baby wailing and a stray dog howling. The screech of brakes and a lamplight. Blinking, that's entertainment. 
basically it. Now this one, I am going to say, this, this doesn't happen on the original, but if you fancy a little solo, you can do a pentatonic G major scale. So that one, if I come in close, is the same shape that we did of this D minor. Sorry, D major pentatonic scale. But we're going to do it up here at the seventh fret. This is the My Girl one, right? Sounds like the My Girl riff. So we've got seven to ten on the C string. Seven to, sorry, sorry guys, brain freeze. Seven to nine on the C string. Seven to ten on the E string. Seven to ten on the A string. Hopefully you're getting those solos, those shapes. And you can also do the E minor pentatonic, which is a similar shape just behind it. That one is four, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Put those notes in any order. And you can create a really lovely solo. Now these solo sheets, they're all available on a link in the description. There's a set of um, sheets with all your major and minor pentatonics on. And you can print those off in advance of the session. And these are also in the book that me and John wrote, my um, our, our, sorry John, <laughs> um, ukulele reference guide, which has every type of scale you could ever want to solo in as well. So it's available there. So you can either print that off or get hold of the book and have it every week. You don't need to print it off every time if you're printing it. It, you can just print it off once, obviously, and you've got it for every time. But those are your solos, um, your solo ones. All right. Yeah, that shake really makes it, doesn't it, Karen? I absolutely love it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Michael and Johnny. Okay, then, guys, let's put this a bit bigger and let's have a go. Loads of fun with this one. Dead simple. Again, if in doubt, just strum G, E minor, A minor, F. All right, you don't need to put the shakes in if you want. One, two, three. Six a.m. on a cool warm morning. Open the window. 
Waking up from bad dreams and smoking cigarettes Cuddling a warm girl and smelling stale perfume A hot summer's day in a sticky black tarmac Feeding ducks in the park and wishing you a far away world That's entertainment That's Kissing months, the scream of midnight. Two lovers missing the tranquility of solitude. Getting a cab and traveling on buses. Reading the graffiti about slash seed affairs. I say that's entertainment. That's Can't really do a fade out on the ukulele, can you, when you're playing it live, I suppose. <laughs> it always makes me giggle when you see song sheets and it says fade out as if you're meant to go quieter and quieter. <laughs> it's a well done, guys. Brilliant. Do you know what? I think I, I say this after every song. I just, I'm such a cliche, I'm so sorry, but I just think that's a touch of genius, that song. Um, it's that kind of gritty working class British kind of um, songwriting that I absolutely love. It almost reminds me of poetry. I guess the nearest thing in America would kind of be that beat poetry, wouldn't it, from the 60s. I, I kind of I love it. I love that grittiness. I love the kind of the anger to it, but with that kind of acoustic guitar. It's just just brilliant. I, I think Paul Weller is just incredible. I love his stuff. I love his soul stuff as well. Just absolutely brilliant. A lot of people um who are into the jam really um did never really get into Style Council, but Style Council had some great songs as well. He really knew how to write a pop song, didn't he, Paul Weller? Amazing, amazing songwriter. And of course, he came back in the 90s as well. When the whole Britpop thing happened, he came back with the album Stanley Road, which is um, a really great um, pop album, some beautiful pop soul stuff on it, which is fantastic. Of course, Wild Wildwood and stuff like that before. So, yeah, I, th I think he's great. Paul Weller. So, fan fantastic. I just see how everyone's, uh, everyone's doing it. Yeah, that's um, that's a great tip, actually, Karen, on the... Um, on the uh, on the um shake yeah absolutely it kind of gives it a give it allows you to keep it a really really loose so when when whenever i strum just let me just move something out of the way whenever i strum most of the movement comes from my arm actually just move this out of the way for a sec like this so when i'm really doing a wide strum I'm coming up like this. See how most of my arm is doing the uh, movement from the elbow here? And there's just like a flick of the wrist at the end. But when I do straight eights, I keep everything from the wrist, really. Can you see? You can actually see my muscles working. Not that I have big muscles at all. Um, but you can see them kind of move in here as I rotate the wrist. So rather than it being the elbow and the upper arm that's doing the effort, the effort is coming from the lower part of my arm where I'm just doing those straight eights, keeping it light. And when I do the shake, just a loose wrist and a shake and a shake. Let's slow that down. And a shake. quite subtle isn't it and a shake really it's only one extra strum from what we're doing but it just adds a, a really element of, of lightness which is um, which is great kind of just adds an extra something to it which is nice isn't it so yeah keep it keep it nice nice and light which is which is lovely 
Oh uh, yeah, Andre, I love you know me, I love Sarah and Craig. They had another backdoor concert, didn't they? Backdoor, backyard concert, um in uh, in from their place in Oahu. Absolutely um love that. What? Hang up. Oh, um Cynthia Lynn. I thought sorry, uh, sorry Andrew, for a second I thought Sarah and Craig were coming to Gnaf. Don't worry, I'm excited about Cynthia Lynn as well. It's absolutely amazing. But I really thought for a second I thought I, I envisaged myself hanging out with um Sarah and Craig this summer. I I went to see them when we went to Oahu last year. And um, it was only about a year ago now. All my memories are coming up on Facebook and so many lovely memories of hanging out with them and um, just just uh, having a, a lovely, lovely time. Um, and yeah, it'd be amazing if they're coming over to the UK. But Cynthia Lynn is fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to be at Gnuff as well. So I'm hoping to lead um, a ukulele walk up there, which would be for good fun. So if anyone's done any of my ukulele walks, it's where we can really get out in the fresh air, have a real fun walk somewhere historical or beautiful, um, get some really gentle exercise, and then we can do a little jam together. So hopefully going to be doing that at Gnuff this year, which would be great. So I'll see some of you there if you're coming to that one so yeah fantastic but yeah it'd be amazing if Sarah and Craig were coming I think they're thinking about traveling next year aren't they I miss Cameron he's such a my, my two kids absolutely um fell in love with their their little son Cameron I've got a little son and um they I just remember this lovely moment Sarah called us over and we peeked into the bedroom and um, my two were lay either side of him on the bed reading him a book it's like oh heart melt moment and such a such a lovely lovely little kid so um, yeah hopefully we'll get to see them soon which would be brilliant okay right back to back to normal life <laughs> just kidding um that's for look so let's have a look at the angle of um can you show the angle of strumming fingernails yeah, that's, ah, okay, no, that's a really, really great query, actually, Rebecca, fantastic, I'm going to leave that up here in the corner. Um, so, the angle that you strum is really important, and there's a few angles that can really help with it. Um, okay, let's just sit that one there. So, first things first, there's a few angles we need to think about when we strum in. The first is the angle of the nails coming down this way. There we go, let me just come down this sorry my uh, thing's being a bit slow come on it's because it thinks i'm trying to yeah there we go there we go so one angle is the angles that these fingers are held against the strings now we don't want to be straight like this and we don't want to be this way so notice that my fingers when i'm picking but also when i'm strumming they're at a 45 degree angle to the strings now if i come in really close that carries through to my index finger, and that's really crucial. If my index finger is like this, it's gonna flop about like this, which is not gonna be good. It's gonna create a really woolly sound. It's gonna be really awkward, right? If it's like this, and it's sideways on, there's no give. So if I hit the uke there, it's gonna hurt a lot. It's gonna be really uncomfortable, and it's gonna wear away my uke here. It's just a really uncomfortable thing to do. But, if we go to that 45 degree angle with the nail of your index finger, or I actually strum with all my nails, rather than just my index, I use all my nails. Notice that when I come down, I have a little bit of give, okay? So it's not like this where it's gonna rip off the nail or get really uncomfortable and it's not flopping about all over the place. I've got a little bit of give, but also when I come back up, it's relatively comfortable with the pad of my nail. So make sure you're not too sideways on. When you're sideways on, that's where you start losing nails and it gets really uncomfortable. 45 degree angles, not there, not there, right in the middle. And the other thing is, when you strum up, this is really, really important advice. So really, even if you've been playing a while, it's really useful. Don't worry about hitting all four strings on an up strum. A lot of people think you've got to come down on all four strings and come back on all four, like that. But really, when I do my up strum, I only really flick the bottom one or two strings. I hit all four on the way down, and just maybe the bottom two or three on the way up. Okay, like that. So even when we change that round to, say, a shake or straight eights, same thing, we're keeping it light. 
if I was to do that shape my finger like this, I'm not actually physically going to do it. It would almost break my finger because it'd be, ah, if it gets caught. If I do it like this, it's going to be really hard to get speed up. But 45 degree angle, nice and light. Slow it down. down, down, down. Fantastic. So hopefully that will really help. That that should um, help with all of our all of our playing, guys. So put that into the next song when we do it. Okay. So do 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 do. Yeah, absolutely. Count. David's just saying about counting as well helps as well. Definitely. So yeah. And David, yeah, absolutely. My walk up in Gnaf, it will be like a pub crawl <laughs> with ukuleles. We could stop at a few pubs. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Get more interesting as the afternoon goes on. <laughs> That'd be great. Take care, Lisa. I think she's got her head off. Oh, I'm going to watch the uh, the basketball. Oh, I'll take care. Have a great game. Have a great game. OK, so let's go back to the sheets again. We'll look at our last song. Let me just bring that up a second. There we go. And... Uh, <laughs> It's a great cover, isn't it? Well done, Esther. Um, so before we do our last song, we have some little kind of quizzes in the back. This is just for fun. You don't have to play along if you don't want to. But um, Esther's done some um, cool quiz questions in the back. And we've got some terrible jokes as well. Um, I'm not going to tell them because I'm awful at delivering jokes. Um, so <laughs> I'll let you read those. The answers are down the bottom. And don't forget, you've got to find the cowbell, the welly, the pants, lemon and glasses. So there's all sorts of things to find. The glasses are really cool. I think it makes one of the people that they're on look like Graham Coxon from Blur. Or maybe me. <laughs> I guess that's the point. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah, see if you can find those in amongst the sheets. And don't forget as well um, to have a little read through of Karen's fascinating facts because every every week we do this, I learn something new, which is amazing. There's some really, really cool stuff in there. So there we go. In fact, I didn't know that Paul Weller wrote this song um, using parts from Paul Drew's um, poet, poem, That's Entertainment. So that's really, that's really interesting. I had no idea about that. So there you go. Okay, guys, let's have a look at the last one to finish off. This one, again, um, again, could be thought of as kind of new wave rather than punk, but it's a, it's a great song. It didn't do very well when it originally came out, but it's really kind of grown in stature. Um, this one's early enough to be punk. This was 1978, this one, um, as were two of the other songs tonight, weren't they? Only ever got to number 57. But it, John Peel featured it in his festive favourites and it, he was a massive fan of this, so he used to play it quite often. Now, this one does have a screaming guitar solo. The guitar solo on this is absolutely fantastic. And I'd uh, really will you to go and have a listen to this. If you've never heard this piece before, go and have a listen afterwards. It's really, really good. So I'm going to get you to solo on this one using the C major pentatonic. Now that one is the same shape that we were doing for these pentatonics that we did here for D and here for G. Only this time it's like our fingers have fallen off the fretboard because it's an open position. So it's easier to just start fresh with new fingers and just think we've got off two on the C string, C, D. Off three on the E string, off three on the A string. Now remember we can also use the A minor pentatonic scale for this, where we solo using the dots on the A string. Yeah, you've got it David on the dots. So the A minor pentatonic scale is off for A, three for C, five for D, seven for E, ten for G, and 12 for A again. You can even go up here and you can play the C here if you want as well. So all your dots. You can also do the same thing on the E string, only we don't want to play this one because on the E string this is a B and we want this C note here. So on the E string it's off three, five, eight. But all the other dots work as well. So it's a properly sound rubbish. It, it, my backing tracks always sound rubbish on this computer, but I'll just give you an example. Don't, don't have to do anything super fancy, but just hit those dots on the A string. 
Oh no, hang on, that's not playing. Let me turn the volume up. Make it a bit higher. Up. Might be because it's plugged in. Let me just give me just a sec, guys. Ah, there we go. Yeah, try that again. I hit an actual bum note there so if I'm allowed to hit bum notes you guys are as well right so just have a little fun with that and um, we're gonna do that after the bridge all right I'll teach you the bridge in a minute I'll teach you all of this now this song also features one of the most famous chord progressions of all time the one five six four C we're in the key of C for this one so C is one what do we think five is C D E F G Count up on your hands, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? G. Six chord, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now the sixth chord in any key is played as a minor, generally. In any key, the second, third and sixth chords are played as minors. First, fourth and fifth are majors. The seventh is a, is a diminished. Don't worry about that too much. So we hit that F and then, uh, that A minor and then the F. Now this is loads of songs, isn't it? I won't hesitate no more, no more it cannot wait. I'm yours, uh, I'm going under and this time I feel there's no one to save me. It's like every modern pop song of all time uses this chord progression. It's one of the most common ever. One sets the scene, five a bit tension, six a bit melancholy and then a little bit of change from that four chord. All right, just we just go round and round and round. Now I'm gonna keep that straight eights going here. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And that's basically it, that's the verses. Now, if you wanted to, you could put that shake. You could put that shake in wherever you want on this one, just add a little bit of variety. Really highlighted it there. Okay, nice, nice and simple. So that's the the verses. I always flirt with death. I look ill, but I don't care about it. I can face your threats and stand up. the chorus relatively straightforward okay we start with that C G A minor F but notice that the A minor and the F are half a measure each so two beats each so to count it would be C two three four G two three four one two one two one two one two all right so it's last chords two A minors two F's two C's two G's a bit like Last of Life by Iggy, Iggy um, pop that on. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the chorus sounds like this. One, two, three, four. I think I'm on another world with you. With you. simple as that right now the bridge has one crazy part in which is like ridiculously hard and I always muck it up whenever I sing it because I used to do this on guitar back in the day just for fun at the, at the clubs and stuff um, and I always muck this bit up because it's super quick and the vocals do something weird but the bridge the first bit's relatively straightforward two C's two F's and again and that's your another girl another planet then the next measure one b each c g b flat f what i know hard right but it's only one measure in a whole song you can always skip over it c 
G, B flat, F. Another girl, another planet, like that. And then you go into the solo, all right, which we talked about earlier. That's your instrumental. So that bridge, another girl, another planet, another girl, another planet. And then we go into the solo, all right? The easiest thing is to stop the strum, just go one, 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 and then we get to the solo, all right? That's really hard, that bit, and I will almost guaranteed muck it up. So if I'm allowed to, you're allowed to. Other than that, straightforward, right? We just go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, the bridge that we just... The solo is just C, G, A minor, F six times. It's the same as the intro. All right, so we just go through that chord progression six times. And then verse, chorus, outro. The outro are just, um, it's the verse again. All right, so if you just strum the chords to the verse on the outro, you'll be absolutely fine. Let's give it a go. Let's have loads of fun. This is our last one for tonight. Just going to take a quick two. And as always, I'll stick around for any questions and help you out at the end there. Okay, so here we go. Let's just check there's no questions. No, I think we're fine. Cool. All right, last one. Let's have fun. Here we go. Uh, intro, go for a crazy solo. The original solo, screaming guitar solo now. David, I'm looking at you, mate. <laughs> All right, that's crazy solo for the intro. One, two, three, four. I'll oh, just play the chords with me. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Been great. Thanks for letting me be a punk. Go on, try it out soon. Let's do the first verse. Here we go. I always flap with death. I look kill, but I don't care about it. I can face your threats and stand up straight and tall and shout about it. I think I'm on another world with you. With you. I'm on another planet with you. With you. But I don't find it irritating You always play to win But I won't need rehabilitating I don't think I'm on another world With you With you I'm on another Another planet with you
I actually missed the end and it should have come in two, four bars earlier, but it's the last song. Doesn't matter, does it? We're just having fun. We're just having fun. Another cracking pop tune, I reckon. I just love singing these. They're just so much fun. Sorry if I go a bit crazy with the voices. I can't help it. I just... The, I know these these pieces are so in my head that I just can't get the original singer's um, vocals out of my head. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, and guys. So, just to finish off then, because I promised it, let's have one more go around a bit of the clash. And then I'll just stop and see if there's any, any questions. Solo! <laughs> Well done, guys. Let me know how you got on. Don't forget, um, if you could um, like the actual video afterwards, just give it a like, it, the actual video, not in the live chat. And if you could put a comment on there, it would really help. Um, spread it, spreading the word is the best thing you can do for me. I'd be really, really appreciative. Um, if anyone wants to leave any tips, just a reminder, paypal.me forward slash ukroom or links in the, dis in the description. And remember, we're away the next two weeks, but back after that. We're going to do some really cool stuff. I'm quite excited, actually, when we get back. OK, let's have one last look at the clash then, which makes sense because it's should I stay or should I go? <laughs> I'll stay for this one. OK, all right. Just a reminder, basically three parts. OK, we've got D, G, D and we've got two Ds, two Gs and one. And also you could do a shake on that. Thanks, Andre. Then we do it twice. Then we've got G, F, G. Back to G, D, G. Uh, sorry, D, G. Then we've got A7. And we're back to D, G, D. That's it. And then when we get to the verse, do your straight eights and keep that going. You can do little shakes here if you want. Exactly the same chords. And this time we're strong. And finally A7. And then at the end of that, back to our stop. All right, let's go for it. This is, this is, this is fun. I love this one. Okay, right, here we go. Oh, I need to find my lyrics. I really, I should know this off by heart. The amount of times I've jumped up and down to this in indie clubs, I should know it off by heart. Right, okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Thanks, John, mate. Two more, because I forgot to come in. Darling, you got to let me know Should I stay or should I go? If you say that you are mine I'll be here till the end of time So you got to let me know Should I stay or should I go? It's always tease, tease, tease You're happy when I'm on my knees One day is fine and next is black So if you want me off your back Well, come on and let me know Should I stay or should I go? Here we go! Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble. But if I stay, it will be double. So come on and let me know. The same decisions bugging me. Set me free. Exactly who am I supposed to be? Don't you even know which close with me? So come on and let me know. Should it be cool? 
cool or should I blow? Should I go? Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble. But if I stay, it will be double. So come on and let me know. Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I love it too much. <laughs> Sorry. Yukes are for cuddling, not for smashing. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for indulging me. I, I, I love that tonight. I have to say, I love punk stuff so much. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just the best. It's just the best. I guess I, 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 when I grew up, it was like 90s music, Britpop and stuff, which I absolutely loved as well. But I, I don't know why I really connected with the punk stuff. I kind of like the tuneful punk stuff. I know it sounds crazy, but I was, I was kind of more into less the heavy stuff, but more the kind of poptastic stuff. I guess that's why I was in the, into the undertones and the buzzcocks and bands like that. They're just, just great, aren't they? So, um, yeah. Oh, thanks, Esther. Let me know how you got on, everyone. And... Uh, I got into that later, Karen, um, all the folk and singer-songwriter stuff. I, get, I think it was Nick Drake that did it for me. Oh, we should do a Nick Drake week. Those might be too hard. Oh, I don't know. Have a look. Love Nick Drake. What, what, great, what a great singer. <laughs> and in trying to say no instrument should be smashed, apart from Carla Waterman's. No, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. No, no, no instrument should be smashed. I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. <laughs> Yeah, Esther, you got you've got a, there's no vibrato allowed. You've got to spit those words out. <laughs> Go on, you could do it. You could do it. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, I just found there's one more photo down here. Look. This is I think this is from when my band we were doing a photo shoot and our manager said we had to find an interesting backdrop. So we found this old disused train in Bristol. This um Esther you used to live in Bristol, didn't you? This is um this was down by the docks, you know where the transport museum is. So there we go. We had all these these um these stars printed. Number one star, number two star, number three star, number four star. And we had a fight about it, and because I was the front man, I got to be number one star. <laughs> we were called the Mighty Stars, which is kind of ironic because we were neither mighty or, or become stars. But it was a cool band. It was great. It was great. One day I'll find one of my old songs for you and see if we can we can play a bit. I think there's still some on um on iTunes, Rams and Music or or whatnot. But uh, yeah, it was good fun. The band the band that I did after this was the band that I really got into, which was a fine day for sailing. But this was more my my punky stuff back in the day, which was which was good fun. So uh, yeah, cool. So um yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, Chris, that jam song's great. Oh, yeah, Andre. Andre, absolutely come to London. Yeah. I lived in Crystal Palace there for years. And I used to, I used to run Brixton Library back in the day. Love. I love my time in London. I couldn't live there forever, but what an amazing experience having, having that time there. I think everyone should go to London for a bit. It's just a great, great experience. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I like Unplugged um, as well. Yeah. Ah, a pink, pink, pink moon. <laughs> David's alluding to a Nick Drake song. One of my all-time favourite Nick Drake songs, in fact. I love Pink Moon. Such a beautiful song. Such a beautiful record. So sad what happened to him. He um he took his own life 
think we were much, much too young. It was really, really sad, actually. But uh, he was incredible. So fun. Oh no, Indrani! Then you can then you can have John Coltrane and all that. <laughs> Esther, no, <laughs> absolutely not. That's where we draw the line. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Oh, uh, Karen's given the answers as well to the um to the uh where everything's hidden as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Karen. That's brilliant. So. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, Indrani. Oh, everyone's lived such interesting lives. It's, isn't it amazing? The world's such a small place. I just think it's. I think it's incredible. I uh, hear the answers to the um to the um finding the pictures for you. I'll make them a bit bigger and put it down there. And there we go. As I say, let us know if you've got any questions or anything of anything. Let me just move this one. And. Uh, And as I say, we're off for the next two weeks now. Um, we'll be back um, on May the 15th will be our next one. Then I'm off the week after that as well. For, that's my family holiday. We're going down to Norfolk, which I'm really excited about. I'm hoping I've timed it perfectly to see the swallowtail butterfly, which I've wanted to see for years and I've never managed to get over. In the UK, swallowtails only breed in one tiny little fen in Norfolk. So if you want to go and, go and see them, in fact, there's two fens. There's Strumshaw Fen is the famous one, but there's one other one. And uh, I'm desperate to go there. So um, I've, I'm a bit selfish. I've coincided our family holiday in May half term with going to see the butterfly. So fingers crossed I'll get lucky. I'm having lots of withdrawal um, and fear of missing out moments at the moment because um, I belong to a lot of butterfly groups on Facebook and everyone's posting beautiful pictures. And I have had some luck recently. We've got a few at the weekends and peacocks and brimstones and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm missing out on the on the ones that I normally go and see because we've had a bit of a rubbish um, spring here. It's been really cold and wet compared to how it normally is. Had a Facebook memory come up with some beautiful green hair streaks that I saw this time last year. And it's like, oh, I really want to go and see them. So yeah, <laughs> see if there's anything else. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, Karen. Yes, beautiful song. Beautiful song. Nick Drake. He he lived in um, he lived in Marlborough. He grew up in Marlborough near um Swindon. So uh, he <laughs> I don't think he was into his football like me though. Um, but yes, yeah, so absolutely um brilliant songwriter. I think he went to university in Cambridge though. Is that right? I think or was it Oxford? I think it was Cambridge. Um, but yeah, yeah, just a, a brilliant, brilliant songwriter from that part of the world. So yeah, fantastic, cool. Um, and also a um, couple of things. Um, don't forget, um, don't forget that, um, don't forget to sign up to our Facebook group. So I think I, I'm going to try and add it as a banner one of these weeks because I keep forgetting, but the link's in the description as well. Um, and we post videos on our Facebook group, um, just things from Canicapila or things from any of my other lessons or something that's not something that I've taught that you're working on yourself. Um, and post encouraging comments and really, really um, kind of gee everyone on, which is really, really good. It's really supportive and warm and a lovely, lovely place to go and post and hang out. So it's called Uke Students Hangout and it's on Facebook. Just have a search for it. Matt Stead, Uke Students Hangout. And you'll find um, loads of cool videos. It's where we also post the details of events and the next can of live lessons, all that stuff is on there as well. And lots of discussions. So Amanda on there today was asking about some advice with us, a buzz on one of her ukuleles and we'll try and help her out with that. So anything you're struggling with or you want help with, come on there and ask the question and we will do our best to, to help out as well. So it's a really nice kind of growing community. Check them out, check them out. That'd be brilliant. And really, really cool. Okay, guys. Oh, <laughs> Esther's got fear of missing out of ukuleles. Yeah, me too. I get that too. Oh, some, some more better. Um, Chuck Moore posted another uke yesterday. Oh, so beautiful. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. 
Right, I'm going to head off now, guys. So thanks so much for all your support. Um, thank you for turning up and joining in and having loads of fun. I love that tonight. So um, I hope you have a brilliant, um, a brilliant couple of weeks. And I'll catch up with you all on May the 15th. I can't wait. It's going to be loads and loads of fun. We're going to do some Canadian songwriters. You might think that's a bit obscure. It's not at all. There are some amazing Canadian songwriters out there, including our friend James Hill. We're going to do one of his pieces. Um, so, yeah, check that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, FOMO, fear of missing out, guys. Yeah, that's it. So take care everyone, thanks everyone, and I'm going to send all my love your way, and we will catch up in a couple of weeks, I'm going to miss you all, take care everyone, and bye!